Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> What's going on, everybody, and welcome to GNR Central. And there's a really cool article that was published on Vulture.com back in 2013 about a guy who rented his apartment to Axl Rose in New York City. So it dates back to 2010. Guns N' Roses were on the road a lot. They were touring heavily. And Axl wanted to get away from L.A. and maybe have a place in New York to re retreat, retire to or basically uh, go to whenever he wanted to get away from the West Coast. So according to the article, which was written by a guy named Steve Fishman, uh, he said Axl Rose is the best tenant ever. He said three years ago, the legendary rocker was looking for a New York apartment to rent. He thought it might be time to move from Malibu and wanted to test out New York. Axl was searching for a place without glaring sunlight, but with lots of space, and I had both. My place is 5,300 square feet and almost entirely underground. It's in Tribeca, which, another benef which is another benefit for him because it is celebrity friendly these days. His neighbors would include James Bond or Daniel Craig and Jon Stewart, as well as a gentleman's club next door. Axel came by to see the apartment twice. Once my wife was there and she reported that he played enthusiastically with our dog and snorted at people who like spaces bathed in light, as realtors say. He loved the place. Of course, I was worried. Axel, after all, had a reputation for wrecking places. There is, for instance, the headline from 2008 that Guns N' Roses' Axel Rose, one of the world's worst hotel guests. But he was said to have reformed as he aged. By the time he inspected my apartment, he was almost 50 years old and getting a belly to prove it. He's, uh, he'd also apparently developed a respect for property rights, those of others included. It's funny, when you go back to the 90s, Axel had a lot of run-ins with his neighbors. The most famous one was probably Gabriella Cantor, which was a neighbor of his in that condo he used to live in, where he apparently hit her over the head with an empty wine bottle, and she was sort of served as a loose inspiration for the song Right Next Door to Hell. So when he left that condo, he ended up moving to the Hollywood Hills. And this is there's a video on YouTube of a guy showing Axel Rose's former house. And he moved there in November of 1990. So he ended up buying a two-bedroom, 2,000-square-foot house on a private one-and-one-third acre knoll in Beechwood Canyon for about $800,000. So what's funny is some of Axel's neighbors took it upon themselves to not just complain or be worried about the noise that may come with Axel moving in next door, but one of them even wrote an op-ed to the LA Times or a letter to the LA Times saying, we are hoping that Mr. Rose won't blast us out of our bedrooms at night. The noise factor from his house would be the main concern. It is down a narrow road and sits on a promontory where sounds from it echoes throughout the canyon. So Rose ended up buying the home for about 800000 and he ended up selling it later on, about two years later, for a pretty hefty loss. He sold it for about 600 and some thousand dollars, so he didn't really make any money off of it. So even when Axel bought the house, he basically said, I don't want this house. He put out a statement to People magazine in the November 19th, 1990 issue saying, this house doesn't mean anything to me. This is not what I wanted, and I didn't work forever to have this lonely house on the hill that I live in because I'm a rich rock star. Then he proceeded to break all of the windows, shoved a $38,000 piano through the side of the house, and destroyed a fireplace, according to the article. The fireplace etched out of granite and placed against a 30-foot tall glass wall was estimated to have cost the previous owner about $30,000. So Axel did have one run-in, or at least one run-in in 2010. So uh, apparently some people, at least on ATMZ, they called him an alleged Bentley abuser. So you'd think with a name like Axel, the dude would have had some respect for a quality automobile, TMZ wrote. Instead, Mr. Rose is accused of beating the hell out of a $192,000 Bentley. So the Guns N' Roses singer is being sued over a 2006 Bentley Flying Spur, a pretty badass ride. So according to a lawsuit filed in L.A. Superior Court, Axel leased the car through Bentley Financial Services back in 2005, then flaked on a $74,000, uh, then flaked out on $74,000 in payments and fees. But here's the rub: Bentley claims that when Axel returned the car several months past the actual due date, the car had some serious damage, including a cracked windshield, two damaged tires, broken glass on the left rear tail light two dented doors, and a gouged bumper. Plus, Bentley says that Axel turned in a mis mismatched spare key and a broken remote key, and he was 42,397 miles over his contracted limit. Bentley wants Axel to fork over $73,000 as soon as possible, including $91 for a missing key. So Axel would end up agreeing to pay Bentley $53,000 for the damaged car, which was quite a deal compared to the fact that they were suing him for $74,000. Now, what's also interesting about this is that he managed to 
uh, use up to 42,000 miles on the car. And I was kind of wondering like, where the hell was he driving to? Maybe he was driving all the way to Arizona or across country uh, to go visit places. So getting back to the article, obviously Axel's attitude towards property rights have changed at the age of 50. So according to Fishman, he really needed somebody to rent this place and he had all the space that Axel was looking for. Plus, Axel agreed to pay the, an extraordinary rent and the guy needed the money. So just in case, Axel offered six months rent as a security deposit. And Axel, according to him, was in a hurry to get into the place we were told. And so we quickly decamped to Brooklyn. Then came move-in day and then it went. So did a second and third date. Still, Axel didn't move in. And he said, this pattern may be familiar to fans who waited for Chinese democracy all these years. He said, my family and I followed Axel's travels via Google Alerts. He was touring in Abu Dhabi and played a birthday party in Russia. We were repeatedly told by his very nice assistants, a mother and a son team, probably referring to Team Brazil, that he was definitely planning a move to New York, which we were informed he'd fallen in love with. He might want, even want to buy our place at that point in time. This attachment was good news since as the one-year mark approached, it was time to renew his lease. He still hadn't set foot in the apartment, and we learned that he had been to New York, though renting a roomy suite at a fancy hotel with a balcony and, well, lots of light. Still, he ended up renewing the lease, and this time at an increased rent. As far as I can tell, Axel never set foot in my place after his initial viewings. I wondered if he remembered that he'd rented it at all. Maybe a superstar lives this way, renting apartments just in case and then forgetting about them. Still, the rent checks kept coming, which is all I really cared about. And when it came time to basically renew for a third year, negotiations began, but then rationality, his managements prevailed. Axel's ghost rental ended in the beginning of 2013 at the two-year mark. He said, people have mixed views of Axel Rose, but as a landlord, I loved him. If he ever needed a recommendation, I'll happily write him one. Quiet, undemanding, and pays his rent on time. And you know, doing this video got me thinking like how much do these places in Tribeca cost to rent? And some of the rents are insane, but I've noticed a lot of them don't even list square footage. So you can get, so you can get a 900 square foot place for about $4,000 a month. Uh, there's another place I saw that's almost 2,000 square feet for 20 grand a month, which I don't even think I pay that much a year in my mortgage, to be honest. And then uh, 105 Duane Street, this one is 469 square feet. The asking rent is $4,300, which is, it's amazing that people choose to live, you know, in that area, unless you can really afford it. But even for that amount, like 500 square feet is tiny. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do any of you guys live in New York? Let me know. And be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you love GNR as much as I do. And go check out GNRcentral.com for the latest Breaking Guns and Roses news as it happens.